prayer meeting, prayer session. This week, uh, we have an esteemed guest in the person of Francis Bukachi, missionary Francis Bukachi, Reverend Francis Bukachi, Pastor Francis Bukachi. I think he's known by many names. Uh, so he will be sharing with us through the service, uh, through today and throughout the coming days of the week. But we want to get the show on the road and we want to start with a word of prayer. So allow me to lead us in prayer. Then we'll have a short session of worship after which uh, we'll allow Pastor Francis to start ministering and sharing with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We thank you for today. We bless you because it's the day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Father, we thank you for the minister for today. We thank you for Pastor Francis as he teaches your word. Thank you, Father Lord, because the entrance of your word brings light. It brings understanding to the simple. We bless you because as he speaks your word, your word brings light, it brings illumination, it brings understanding in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord, because everybody who hears your word and listens to your word is transformed even by the power of the word in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, even as we continue with this service, as we get into a session of praise and worship, we thank you, Father Lord, because your word says that you dwell in the midst of the praises of your people. We honor you, we glorify you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So welcome again, those who are joining us. I can see a few people joining us here online. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Pastor Francis is here with us already, but we want to uh, spend some time just in a session of worship. And after we are through that session of worship, I'll invite him. Uh, what we've been doing since last week during our worship sessions has been... Uh, We've been sharing our worship sessions that were recorded for Zion Jew, our morning glory. So we'll share the session that, that was shared today in the morning, and I hope you enjoy yourself. You can just sing along. These are worship songs that many of us are familiar with. We can just sing along with those worship songs before we get into the sharing of the word of God. Amen. Karim. <music> Revelation 5, 5 says, Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, the root of David has triumphed. He's able to open the scroll and its seven seals.
We glorify your name. Let's just lift up our voices for a few minutes and let's honor him. Father, we bless you. We glorify your name. We honor you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We honor you this evening because you're the Lion of Judah. We worship you. We honor you because you're a holy God. We honor you because you're a faithful God. We honor you, Lord, because you deserve the praise and you deserve the glory and you deserve the honor and the power and the majesty. Hallelujah. Receive the praise today, O God. Receive the honor today, O God. Receive the glory today, O God. Receive the majesty today, O God. We honor you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We acknowledge that you are the lion of the tribe of Judah. We acknowledge that there's nothing that is too hard for you. Lord, even during this lockdown, even during this downtime, Father, we continue to acknowledge that there's nothing that is too hard for you. Your hand is not too short to save. Your ear is not too dull to hear, O God. We thank you because you care for us, O oh God. We thank you because you are our shade at our, at our right hand. The sun shall not smite us by day, nor the moon by night, O oh God. We honor you, Lord, for the greatness of your plans and your purposes concerning us, O oh God. We honor you, Lord, because with every passing day, these great plans and purposes continue to be activated, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We honor you, Lord, because you're a holy God. You are separate. You are distinct. You are whole. You are one. That's who you are, O oh God. We honor you because you made us in your image and you made us in your likeness. And during this season, O oh God, even as we, as we wait on you, as we listen to instruction from you, as we observe what you're doing in the nations, O oh God, we thank you because increasingly, our lives reflect who you are. Our lives reflect who you've called us to be. Our lives reflect the calling, the election, the purpose, the assignment that you've given to us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We bless you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We say this evening, receive the praise. We say this evening, receive the glory. We say this evening, receive the honor, receive the power, receive the majesty, receive the might, receive the dominion, receive the authority. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So thank you once again for joining us uh, for this evening meeting. We are grateful. Uh, those who are able to join us here uh, on Zoom and those who are able to join us online, we are grateful that you have had time to join us. Like I said earlier, this week, through this week, we have a guest speaker and that guest speaker is uh, none other than uh, uh, Pastor Francis Bukachi. I think some of us know him by many names. We know him as Minister Francis Bukachi. We know him as Missionary Francis Bukachi. We know him as Reverend Francis Bukachi. We know him as Apostle Francis Bukachi, uh, but he's here with us through the week and I'm sure we will be blessed. So I want to just hand over to him uh, so that he can continue on and just sharing what he, God has laid in his heart for today. Thank you very much, Pastor Francis. Karibu sana. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. It's good to be here today, and I thank you for this invitation again. Uh, I hope all of you are well, and you are uh, doing well in the Lord. Today, I just want us to start with this topic on waiting on God. Uh, I don't know how long we'll take on it before we'll be able to shift to the court of heaven. But I felt that it's important to start with the learning about waiting on God because it is a part of preparation if you want to learn to function in the courts of heaven. And before we start, I just want us to uh, uh, appreciate that it's something new. It's something I've been trying to learn for the last five years. And actually today I was just reflecting some of the things the Lord has taught me in the last five years. I'm very, very grateful. There's something I've been asking the Lord for the last five years in relation to this topic. And today, the Lord was able to give me a lot of clarity uh, on how it, I can apply it in my personal life. Now, when it comes to the waiting on God, I'll be doing topical introduction. The first scriptures I want us to read is from uh, Isaiah chapter 50, verse 5 to 7. I'll read in the King James Version. If you're there, Isaiah 50, chapter 5, Isaiah 50, verse 5 to 7. And this is what it says. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. Nor, nor did I turn away. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. The Lord God will help me, therefore I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. Amen. So this section, I want us to focus on the price we need to pay 
as we learn to wait upon God. There's a price, there's a price that God gives in these scriptures if you're going to learn to wait on God. And the first one he says, the Lord has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. The first price you have to pay is obedience. Obedience just to wait upon the Lord. And sometimes, like a good example, there are days you'll wait on the Lord maybe for one hour or three hours and nothing happens. Nothing happens. You leave that place feeling there was no divine connection with anything. And many people try to give up at that point when actually it's at that point the Lord is testing your obedience. So I want to encourage you that pursue just taking the time because there are different aspects on waiting on God we are going to see. And sometimes the Lord just wants to see how patient are you? How long are you waiting to wait? How willing are you willing to sit there and just wait for him? So the Lord has opened our ears. That's a guarantee. All of us, the Lord, when you got born again, we have the ability to be able to wait in the presence of God to learn from him. But we do not need to be rebellious. This is a command the Bible gives in the word of God. If you read this, uh, we read especially the book of Psalms chapter 37, where the Lord commands us, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. The second thing he says, I gave my back to the smiters and those who, uh, who struck me. The second condition here, yeah, you have to submit. When you are starting to wait on God, Sometimes you feel it's waste, wasted time. Uh, and if people find you just, you know, you tell people you take time to wait upon the Lord for hours or for time. And people say, I think people will discourage you. People will try to push back because we are used that when we come in the presence of the Lord, we just start talking, we start worshiping, we start singing a song, or sometimes we start praying. Or we, we, when we get distracted, we take the Bible, we start reading. But the Lord is saying here, you have to be willing to submit even to, 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 the, to the, I would say to those who will smite you or discourage you when you're trying to learn to wait upon the Lord. The third thing he says, for the Lord God will help me. This is our confidence. There is no command in the Bible that the Lord gives and does not give us his help. One of the things I've learned in the last few years, the Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes, he comes as our helper. I will address my prayers to the Holy Spirit and just tell him, Lord, Holy Spirit, I want you to help me in this situation. I want you to teach me because Jesus promised us it's the Holy Spirit who teaches us. It's the Holy Spirit who corrects us, comforts us in this season in which we are living in. So the Bible says here, the Lord will help you. When you start waiting upon him, the Lord is able to help you. Even when things get difficult, he will help you. Then he says, I have set my face like a flint. This means you have to be determined. You have to be determined. Do not, uh, your focus is to encounter the Lord. Let me put it like that. So you have to focus in this time that you keep on uh, praying quietly in your heart. Lord, I want to encounter you. Lord, I want to know you even as a waiter. Paul, be focused on just knowing God as a person. And the last thing he says, I shall not be ashamed. That means as we wait upon the Lord, as we start taking this step, the Christ that one of the things the Lord tells us, these are assurance he gives us. You will not be ashamed when you start taking time to wait upon the Lord. I just want to give examples at the beginning, uh, maybe this section. During the last two weeks, you know, uh, we've been going through so much, uh, but also I realized I was hearing God very, very clearly. I mean, as I've been journaling for the last few days, uh, sometimes I remember waking up with this song that uh, we sang almost 30 years ago. And this was the second time the Lord was challenging me about it. And I started asking the Lord, what are you really trying to teach me? And the Lord was trying to challenge me, look, this is the time to start praying for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and a fresh baptism of fire. This is the time. This is song saying, God, you'll purify me with your love. And then the next day, I was just sitting alone in my chair, <laughs> where nobody wait upon the Lord. And towards the end of it, I think it was after two or three hours, I just got this clear vision of this young person, one of the students we had trained a few years ago. And I just saw clearly this student, this young person is walking on a road, but has reached a crossroad, a fork in the road. And it's like, is she, uh, she's being given a chance to choose one way or the other. And the Lord just laid in my heart to pray for her. 
that she will choose the path of the Lord, a path that will allow her to worship and serve the Lord using her talents, the gift that the Lord has given her. I've not had communication back from her because I contacted her, but that's one of the benefits when you're waiting on God. You don't know at what time the Lord will start communicating or his presence will come. And then after that, today, of course, there are some scriptures I've been praying for the last five years from Exodus 15. And the Lord started showing me clearly how I can start working on in that area of my life. So I want to encourage you, there is a price tag that we need to pay as we learn to wait upon the Lord. There's the price tag it includes obedience, submission, having confidence that the Lord will help you. And lastly, to make sure that you have deep, deep assurance from the Lord. Now, when it comes to waiting for the Lord on the Lord, uh, another scripture that is very important is in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. So I want us to read, uh, is a key scripture when it comes to learning to wait upon the Lord. Isaiah 30, verse 18 says, Therefore, the Lord will wait, that he may be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted, that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice, Blessed are those who wait for him. This scripture is very interesting. It starts by saying, it's the Lord that waits. The Lord waits on us. Okay, the Lord waits on us. So sometimes when you're learning to wait on God, there are three parts of waiting God. Sometimes God will call you to wait with him the second part he'll call it is to wait for him. And the third one is to wait on him, like to serve him. So when you are learning about the waiting on God, it can take those three aspects. Sometimes the Lord will just want you to wait on him in a session. Uh, a good example is uh, uh, the Lord, you know, I always tell people sometimes when the Lord manifests, he doesn't talk. He just wants you to be with him. And that is waiting with him. And when he finishes, he may not talk. You just feel his presence and he leaves. But there are times also the Lord calls you to wait for him. That means to, you are focusing on him, your eyes on him, you are focusing on him, your eye, your inner eyes focus on him. You're not deviating anywhere. And sometimes you can have distractions. Sometimes, you know, when you're waiting on the Lord, uh, you get phone calls, there are these thoughts flying in your mind. We have to discipline ourselves that we are want to, wait, to focus our inner eye on him. And the third one is to wait on him, which means to serve him. The Lord may want you just to spend time uh, worshiping quietly, uh, not loudly, just in your spirit. Your spirit man is alive to him, but you're not opening your mouth. So there's this distinction that we have. So this scripture, it says that, therefore the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. That is a promise. Normally when we wait on the Lord, he will show us grace. Grace is manifested in many, many, many ways. We have the grace of the power of God. We have the grace of the presence of God. We have the grace where God just decides to bless you. So waiting on God is not in vain. Now, when you're waiting on God, this is a classroom of waiting. It's not a classroom to experiment with the Lord. Uh, you're not going to tell the Lord, let me try this to see whether it will work or not. Uh, it doesn't work with the Lord. Okay? We have like to focus on the Lord to make sure that when you're waiting on him, we are focused on him. And it's not an experiment. It's a classroom. It's a place we are determined to spend time with him. Uh, there's a, another scripture I want us to focus on is lamentation. I want to go to the section now. Uh, the need for waiting on the Lord. We have talked about the price tag. Now we want to talk about the need of waiting. So we are going to look at several scriptures. The first one is Lamentations chapter 3, verse 25. Lamentations chapter 3, Verse 25. Lamentations is after the book of Jeremiah. Uh, okay. This is what the Bible says in Lamentations 3, verse 25. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Okay, the Lord is good to those who wait on him, to those who seek him. So what can be observed from this scripture is that seeking of God involves waiting for God. 
all of us have learned, you know, the way, depending on how we grew up, that when you are seeking God, uh, we learn that seek, one of the ways we seek God is searching the word for some specific things you want to know from the Lord. Also, we seek the Lord through prayer and fasting. But also, this one says clearly, the Lord is what? Good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. So part of, of seeking the Lord is learning to wait for him. And then Isaiah 30 verse 18, which we read, it says that God waits for men to wait for him. Okay. God wants us to take time to wait for him. That's one observation we can know. That's, it's like a, a desire the Lord has that he wants us to spend time waiting on him. Uh, the same way we get spiritual disciplines in prayer, in worship, in service, in obedience, in fellowship with the saints. This is another area the Lord wants us to grow, just to take time, to allocate time upon him, uh, uh, just to wait on him. It may be connected to the spiritual discipline of solitude, solitude where you want just to be alone with the Lord, but it's more than that. It has a purpose. You don't just want to be alone so that you don't want disturbance. You want to be alone so that you wait on the Lord. So that's why Isaiah 13 is very, uh, 30 verse 18 is very specific. And then it says in Proverbs 8 verse 34, it gives us another aspect of waiting on God. Okay. Proverbs chapter 30, eight, praise, Proverbs chapter 8 verse 34, sorry. And this is what it says. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Now, if you know, the Bible says there are gates of righteousness, I think in Psalm 78. Uh, God has gates and doors to his kingdom. And the Lord expects us to take time just to wait at his gates. Okay? The assumption, the picture here is a picture of a palace where someone would wait at the gate before they are welcomed in. And we know the Lord is our king. So the Lord will expect us, when you are waiting, he promises blessedness to those who wait for him. I really want us to really remember this point because waiting on God can be very, how do I say it, lonely. Because when you wait on God, it's difficult to wait on God in a crowd. But it's that point that we realize when you're waiting on him, the Lord promises us that at the gates, when we wait to him, there'll be a blessing. And you go back to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, he says that this blessedness awaits everyone without exception. That means uh, when you start waiting on God, this is a promise in Isaiah 30, verse 18, that is open to anyone. It's open, uh, let me be very specific. It's just not open to prophetic people or people who are prophets. The Lord expects prophets to wait on him from Habakkuk chapter 2. But the Bible teaches us every believer has an opportunity to be able to wait on the Lord. Okay. The second major point we have to say, why does God wait with his response to man in the light of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18? So we'll just say Isaiah 30 verse 18. Why does God wait with his response to a man in light of Isaiah 30 verse 18? In order to do a work of grace in a man while God uses the period of waiting as an opportunity to do what we cannot do for ourselves. When you're waiting on God, it's a sign of humility. It's a sign of emptiness. You are allowing God to do something in your life that you cannot do for yourself. So like I gave the example initially, when we start learning to wait on God, there are many times you go days and days, nothing is happening. I always say that something may not be happening upon you. You may not be experiencing the manifest presence of God. But surely there's something God is doing inside you. There's something the Lord is doing inside you. So just be patient until he finishes the work. Secondly, God does it to accomplish a work which will result in his exaltation and man's uh, humility. God will start doing things at some point that will bring glory and exaltation to his name, but will really bring great humility in your life. And then finally, to manifest his mercy and demonstrate the wisdom of his judgment. That's what we find in Isaiah 30, verse 18. The Lord says he will show mercy. Now we know there's a difference between mercy and grace. Grace, normally, 
there are two definitions of grace in the Bible. There is unmerited favor to a person, but also there's the grace of the uh, power of God when God shows people his power. It's a manifestation of grace. But mercy is when you are shown when you don't deserve it. Okay? When you don't deserve it, when you are waiting on God, God is able to extend his mercy and also give you wisdom uh, to show his judgment. To what purpose does God keep man waiting? Why does God keep us waiting? Okay? That's the, we're trying to deal with the need of waiting. So we'll see Psalm 37 verse 7. Psalm 37 verse 7. This is what it says, Psalms 37 verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. So we see here, during the time of waiting, we're able to silence our own restlessness and agitation of our human spirit when we see the wicked prospering or when you see the wicked succeeding in their schemes when you learn to wait upon the Lord, the Lord is able to quieten our spirits and the agitation of our spirits. So that's a great blessing. And in Habakkuk chapter 20, it says, uh, God wants us to wait so that we learn to reverence a holy God, to give him a, a holy reverence. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20, to teach us how to reverence a holy God, to show us that he is high and exalted, but we are from the earth. Okay? Let's just read Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. This is what it says. But the Lord is in his holy temple, let the earth be silenced before him. Uh, when you want to wait upon the Lord, you will start uh, uh, experiencing the holiness and the awesomeness of his holiness. And uh, I think in our daily activities these days, it's so easy to become very busy that we forget that we serve a holy God that needs to be honored greatly. So that's waiting on God gives us time to show, to give reverence to his holiness. And then in Psalms 42, verse 1 to 2, Psalms 42, verse 1 to it says, to intensify man's desire for God, so that God may have a greater opportunity for a greater response. What it's saying that as we wait upon the Lord, we get hungry for the Lord. And the Bible says, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? So waiting on God also stirs a hunger in you. Uh, this one is, I always say, uh, people say, well, Bible says, those who are thirsty, let, let them come to me. But you find that as the Lord fills our thirst and our hunger, he also creates more thirst and hunger. So that tomorrow you come back. Next month you come back. You don't tell the Lord that I've had enough of you. So waiting on God enables us to be able to, to, be able to have a hunger just for the presence of the Lord. And then finally, another purpose he reveals is uh, in Exodus chapter 12, 24, verse 12 to 16. Uh, Exodus 24, verse 12 to 16. Now, this is uh, an important scripture that I really like uh, about Moses. Exodus 24, verse 12 to 16. It is in waiting in the law that the Lord conditions our faculties to receive from him, to follow him, and also to complete submission in us. Okay, So this is the story when Mo Moses went to the mountain. We know when he went to the mountain, the Lord told him, come up on the mountain and be there and I'll give you tablets of stone. But for him to go, if you read the story, when Moses went on the mountain, he waited for seven days in the cloud before the cloud covered him. And I believe the Lord was conditioning him in the, uh, on the mountain before he will give him the revelation of the tabernacle, the revelation of the laws, because after that, after seven days, he was totally covered and then he disappeared for 40 days. Okay, So it says in verse 16, that the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai 
and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. From there, Moses disappeared for 40 days. And we know he went to heaven where he was able to receive the Ten Commandments. He was able to receive the design of the tabernacle. So uh, we will see this later again. Waiting on God prepares our human faculties to be able to receive revelation. And in this particular story, I, I like Moses of receiving revelation of what we call an artistic masterpiece. The tabernacle was an artistic masterpiece, you know. It looked very ugly from outside, but from inside it was full of beauty. It was full of gold, silver, patterns, everything. So it prepared him to be able to, when he reaches in the presence of the Lord, to be able to receive. So waiting on God will prepare us to receive everything he wants us to receive. And then finally, I want us to look at Psalms 37. We'll spend there some time. Uh, Psalms 37. Psalms chapter 37. Okay. How is this rest obtained in the light of waiting upon the Lord? We just look about, Psalms 37 talks about waiting on the Lord. So in verse 7, it says, Be still before Jehovah and wait patiently for him. Another version says, be silent for Jehovah and stay yourself for him. Uh, the Hebrew translation says, resign yourself to the Lord and wait patiently for him. Another version says, be resigned to Yahweh and ye wait with longing for him. And the Greek translation says, submit yourself to the Lord and supplicate him. Another translation says, leave it to the eternal God and be patient. So submission is a way of surrender, okay? Submitting yourself to the Lord and to his presence. And just be patient before him. Now, patience is a fruit of the spirit. It never comes easily. But if we are going to learn to wait on God, we have to be able to surrender, number one. And number two, we have to be willing to do what? To be patient. Just be patient. Sometimes one of the ways you train yourself to wait upon the Lord is to allocate time. Okay. When you're beginning, I always say, begin with some little time. You can do 15 minutes. And during these 15 minutes, you're not praying, you're not reading the Bible, you're not worshiping. And then extend it to 30 minutes, one hour. And sometimes the Lord will just tell you, sit in his presence and just wait for hours. Uh, somebody will think you're sleeping. You're not sleeping. You're just waiting. It's at that point you're able to surrender to the Lord. Now in verse 1 it says, how do we obtain this rest when you're waiting? Verse 1. By not permitting ourselves to become fretful or envious. Okay. In Psalms 37 verse 1. The Bible says, do not be fretful. Uh, do not be anxious when in the presence of the Lord. The anxiety can come because of what we have gone through the day. But also can, anxiety can come because you're not patient. We want to Lord, the Lord to move quickly when actually the Lord does not work like that. One thing I, can, I always tell people, the Lord is never late. So when you're waiting upon the Lord, the Lord will never, never be late. But also, he can keep you waiting. Sometimes he can keep you waiting for three days. He can keep you waiting for 24 hours. He can keep you waiting. Like for me, these scriptures, the Lord was able to open my understanding it has taken five years. The good thing I'm happy about uh, is one of those regular scriptures I'll go back and pray because it's a scripture you pray about it. And the more I pray that today is like the Lord was just able to show me clearly what it means, what it means to live in his sanctuary, what it means to live on his mountain, what it li li means to live in his, uh, in his dwelling place from the New Testament now, not from the Old Testament. And I was very, very, uh, very grateful so most of the afternoon, uh, I spent time writing a lot because I was trying to write down everything I felt the Lord was trying to share with my heart. So when you're waiting on the Lord, do not fret. Do not be envious, you know. Just rest in the presence of the Lord and let him move when he wants to move. And then the next scripture is Psalms 37 verse 3. Psalms 37 verse 3. 
Psalms 37 verse 3. So we'll read Psalms 37 verse 3, verse 4, and verse 5. So we'll stay in the same chapter. So Psalms 37 verse 3 to 5. This is what it says, okay? Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Now, what it's saying here, you have to have confidence in the integrity and the character of God when you are waiting on him. Just trust in him. The Lord is faithful when you are waiting on him to be able to come through. In verse 4, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of the heart. By seeking and finding God in our, if seeking and finding God is our greatest joy, then we will have satisfaction in him. There is a, there's a point of waiting on God. You don't wait for him to receive anything. You just wait to him, uh, upon the Lord to be able to enjoy his presence. And that is enough. That is, you, you are not desiring an encounter with the Lord. You're not in, uh, in desiring a need to be met. You just want to wait upon the Lord so that you'll enjoy his presence. And the Bible says, we you know, in the fullness of his presence, you know, there is always joy. So I don't think you always, even when God does, you don't expect anything. The Lord will always deposit something in your spirit just because you spend time with him. And then finally, verse 5 says, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So waiting to the Lord, you communicate your ways to God. Turn your problems over to him. Roll your problems over to him. This one is repeated in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. You have to roll your problems to the Lord. Uh, if you have anxiety over issues, things that you feel that you don't understand, I always tell uh, people that our God is a father, so he's not afraid uh, for us to ask him difficult questions. Uh, and let me very let me give examples. You know, you can ask him personal questions. Maybe you're struggling with health. Maybe you're struggling with a child. You're struggling with a friend. In that time, in your spirit, you can ask him those questions. It may be in your workplace. It may be an issue to do with our country. You know, in this time when people are praying for our nation. It's not a good idea just to bombard heaven with a lot of prayers. And you're not asking questions. Because if you ask him questions, the Lord will be able to answer. The Lord will be able to deposit in your spirit his feelings or what he's seeing, or what he's hearing. I always like the story when the Lord gave an encounter to Moses in the wilderness in Exodus chapter 3. When the Lord appeared to him, first of all, he caused attention Moses to Moses by causing this fire burn on a bush. Okay? So Moses decided to look back. And people say it's the looking back, the response, that invited Moses into the presence. So God caused uh, something, a bush to start burning. Moses turned back, and immediately turned back, the Lord caught his attention, and Moses walked there. The Lord told him, look, he started hearing this voice speaking to him. Now, you can imagine, Moses was eight years old. Since his childhood, he had never heard the voice of God. He had never seen uh, a manifest presence of God visibly. But he heard this voice asking him, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And then when he takes a step closer, he's told, you know, remove your shoes. As he's having this encounter, later you find the Lord, when he's commissioning Moses, he tells him, I have heard the cries of my people and I have seen. So it's at that point when you're asking God, you're casting your ways to him, you'll be able to hear, you'll be able to see, you'll be able to perceive, you'll be able to understand what is in his heart. Amen. The next section is the manner of waiting, and we'll end with that one today. How do you wait upon the Lord? So I'll just give you scriptures, okay? We can follow the scriptures later. How do you wait upon the Lord? Number one, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. Bible says you wait upon the Lord early in the morning. Okay? That means you start early. Uh, I always, uh, when it comes to timing, you know, we live in the age of the New Testament. So I always say we have more grace than the Old Testament people. So we have an opportunity to ask the Lord what is the best time to wait upon him. 
So we have those who have like night time, there are those who like morning time, those who like noon time. I remember in missions, we normally learn that the mother of uh, John Wesley and Charles Wesley, her waiting upon the Lord was 12 o'clock noon because she had 19 children. So she was able to feed those kids, school them, homeschool them. And then at 12 o'clock, she tell all those kids to go and sleep so that she has time alone with the Lord. So whatever early it means, so I'm not saying early is morning necessarily. Early is the appointed time the Lord, you have agreed with the Lord. For some of us, like for me when I started, I remember it was to make sure by six o'clock early in the morning, I prepare to go and be the Lord. There are days you'll miss it. If you miss it, don't condemn yourself. Just repent and go back. There are some people who do it 5 a.m. I know people who do 3 a.m. I know people who do 2 a.m. Uh, I always tell people, it's not so much what you want to do, is the time the Lord wants you to do it. Because there's a specific time the Lord wants you to meet with him. Now we know for Adam and Eve, they are waiting upon the Lord. The Bible says very clearly in Genesis chapter 3, it was in the evening. So they had to keep that appointment in the evening. They will hear the voice of the Lord walking in the garden of Eden. So ask the Lord, what's the time you want him to meet with you? And then Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34. Proverbs 8, chapter 34. It says, it's good, you, it's good to wait upon the Lord daily. That means you need to be systematic. Yeah. Blessed is the man who listens to me. Okay. Make sure you do it daily. Uh, commit yourself daily to watch at his gates. Daily. Uh, from my own practical experience, my goal is to do it daily, but there are sometimes I'm not able to do daily because either of work or because of things I need to do. But it's always good to go back to the time you agreed with the Lord. Uh, whether you're traveling, whether you are having other issues, keep that time. Do not let the circumstances of life to keep you from having a daily time of waiting on the Lord. And remember, I'm saying this daily time is not to pray. Is not to see, is not to worship, it's just to wait upon the Lord. And in verse 34, it says, You watch when you are alert. Okay, you make sure you are alert when you're waiting upon the Lord. So imagine you're waiting at the gate to enter palace, you're not going to sleep. Of course, uh, some of us, when you're waiting upon the Lord, you close your eyes, you close your eyes to be able to focus on the spirit man of the Lord. But it doesn't mean you're sleeping. It just means you're alert to the, uh, the uh, spiritual atmosphere around us. And then the, the next verse is Hosea chapter 12, verse 6. We have to watch upon the Lord, uh, wait upon the Lord continually. It should be a mode of life, not merely a temporary thing we do. And actually, I found that it's when you do it, uh, continually is when you build it as a habit in your life. You know, all of us have gone through time, you know, you have prayed for hours, maybe for time or for days. You have read the word, you just want a break. You have listened to worship and you just want a break. That's what I'm talking about. You just shut down everything and then just wait on the Lord without any dis disruption. Psalm 62, verse 1 to 5. Psalm 62, verse 1, verse 1 and 5. Okay, it says, we should wait upon the Lord expectantly, with confident and active expectation. Okay? That means when you are expectant, the Lord will come. You will meet the Lord. Okay? You have to go expectantly. Expectation, sometimes people translate it hope, sometimes people translate it as Faith, it says, my soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. So we are waiting upon the Lord. We are expecting from him. It's not in vain. Psalms 40, verse 11, it means, it says, we should wait upon the Lord patiently, calmly, without being, um, don't be anxious. Okay, Wait on the Lord just calmly and don't be anxious. Be patient. Uh, patient is not an easy thing to learn. Yeah. 
patience is not easy to learn. Like, let me give you an example. The day I saw this vision of this person I needed to call, I mean, I'd spend a lot, almost two hours, and I was like wrapping up and boop. I get this clear picture that this person is about to make a major decision. And the Lord just lays on my heart, please pray for them. Okay? Psalms 40 verse 1. Sorry, Psalms 40 verse 1. So you're supposed to wait upon him uh, patiently. Be calm before the Lord. Do not hurry God. God is never hurried. Actually, uh, I remember a man of God said, the Lord kept on telling me, if you hurry God, that is a sin. <laughs> if, if you have this expectancy that you're going to hurry God, that's a sin because you're not being patient. Okay? I waited patiently for the Lord that he inclined his ear to me. He heard my cry. So there's a patience that is involved. And then number seven, uh, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 26. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 26. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 26. Okay. It says, it is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. So it says here, we should wait with hope, with quiet and wavering confidence that God is going to respond to us. I remember the first time uh, I was started learning to wait on God. So I was listening to this man of God teach about it. And he said it took him one year. Uh, so he said it takes one year to one and a half years. It was after that time he had a powerful encounter with the Lord. Okay. So sometimes you just have to be patient. There is no timeline. You cannot compare with yourself with anyone else because the Lord knows us individually. But the day you will encounter the Lord, you will never forget it. You will never forget it. So as you wait upon the Lord, you are supposed to do it patiently and with confidence. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. We go back to the same scripture. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. When you're waiting upon the Lord, the Bible says, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. That means you have to prefer the Lord when you're waiting upon him than anything else. That means he has to take priority. Uh, like I said, you know, when you have prayed, you have read the Bible, you have sought the Lord, you have fasted and nothing is happening. Then just wait. Wait upon the Lord and prefer him, you know, there's this scripture Paul says in Galatians that he decided not to consult men. That's when he went to the Arabian desert for three years. And if you read the life of Paul, Paul, although he knew the Lord, the day he got saved, Paul encountered the Lord as bright, the brightness of the glory of God. But to really know the Lord, because he had never walked with the Lord on the earth as the other apostles, he went for three years in the wilderness and he was taught of the Lord, everything about the gospel. He comes out after three years, 14 years later, he goes to look for the apostles to compare the gospel he was preaching to what they were preaching to find out whether they are same. And actually found out they are the same. So there are times when you prefer the Lord, you don't want even to hear from a human being. You just want to hear from the Lord. Not because you are proud, but because you are in a situation, you want the clarity of the Lord himself. That's what it says when you're waiting, make sure you prefer the Lord. And then finally, there's this wonderful scripture in Isaiah 64, verse 4, and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Paul is quoting Isaiah 64. So I want us to read Isaiah 64, verse 4, then we'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Paul quotes Isaiah, but he applies it. The Bible says in Isaiah, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any besides you, who acts for the one who waits for him. So Isaiah tells us clearly, the Lord will always act for those who hear for him. So Paul applies it in a different way. And he says, the same scripture, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. It says, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have had, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. 
So he applies it. True waiting of God comes for those who love him. Our motivation to wait upon God is because we love him. Okay. What he has prepared for him that waited for him in Isaiah 64 is applied in 1 Corinthians 2, 7, who has worked for him, who loves him. So waiting on God is a demonstration that we love him. Okay. Now, in Isaiah 64, it says, when you are waiting upon the Lord, the Lord sets the wheels of divine providence into motion on behalf of those who wait for him in loving anticipation. God works while we wait and continues to work as long as we are waiting. So I want to repeat that statement. God works while we wait and he continues to work while we wait for him. That means he acts on our behalf when you are waiting. And uh, this scripture, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, chapter 2, we'll see it maybe tomorrow. That's why Paul says, you know, as we wait upon him, the Lord Holy Spirit will start revealing things to us. We're able to see, we're able to hear, we're able to perceive. So waiting on God is the key point to receive revelation from the Lord. So don't be impatient when you're waiting upon God, okay? As we finish today, I just want to encourage you Remember the points we say, the price we need to pay in waiting upon God. Number two, why we wait upon God. And number three, how we need to wait upon God. And I hope that, uh, take the time. If you have never done it, like I say, start with 15 minutes, go to 30 minutes, then proceed to one hour, do two hours. You know, just be alone with the Lord. Because what happens is the Lord starts training your inner man, your spirit man to be sensitive to him to his presence, to his uh, whatever the desires he has in his heart. And like I said, it doesn't mean sometimes you are quiet. In your spirit, you'll be worshiping. You may be singing a song. You're not opening your mouth. It's just that uh, deep presence of the Lord in your heart that you're focusing on. You don't want that uh, manifest presence inside you to be disturbed. So as you wait upon the Lord, you're able to grow until as point, you'll be able to know when the Lord manifests anywhere, anytime. So God bless you, and uh, I hope you have been challenged like I've been challenged. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Francis. Thank you very much. Thank you for that session. I think it was an eye-opener. Um, I know many of us are used to fire and brimstone, and we want fire <laughs> to fall down from, <laughs> from Mount Sinai, but really, I felt it was really, really deep. I like the depth that he was getting into with uh, some of that discussion about the power of waiting on God. I, I think for the last three years or so, thereabouts, God has also been challenging me about the, just the need to wait on him. You know, and I thought, I, I actually thought that I had... Uh, you know, you pray, you fast, uh, you do all the Christian disciplines. And I began to hear about this discipline of waiting. And I thought, wow, I've never heard of this before. And I discovered that when I am in, in, in times of serious waiting on him, one of the things that happens to me is that one, there's a lot of revelation. God just begins to open scriptures, gives me understanding, uh, gives me insight. In fact, I love what Pastor Francis said about revelation. For me, that one of the things is just a revelation. I begin to see things differently. I begin to see scriptures differently. Um, I become more aware of his presence. I become more aware of that which he is saying. And again, I borrowing from what Pastor Francis said, sometimes the waiting is really because you've had opinions of people and you don't want, you're just tired of opinions of people you want to hear God's opinion on a matter and when you spend that time waiting on him it may not come out on day one or day two but God is faithful to give us his opinion on, on, on issues that affect us one of the reasons for me why, why waiting is so important is because in this season we need to begin to hear God at a whole new level you know a, a lot of our hearing has been tainted by you know prosperity message uh, get rich quickly uh, you will not suffer things will always be well and we need to be begin to hear him beyond that. You know, we need to begin to hear him beyond prosperity where we can really hear, can I use the word in spirit and in truth? 
Can I add that there where we can truly hear what God wants to say and what God desires of us as, as his people. So that's why it's so important in this season to wait on him. On Saturday, I remember, I think some of us who were there for the meeting, uh, Ruth was sharing about uh, George Washington Carver and how God gave him revelation. But she connected that with meditation and waiting. You know, that in that place of waiting, God began to give him creativity and God began to give him uh, solutions, game-changing solutions concerning uh, the peanut. But it was really because of that waiting as we begin to wait on God, then God begins to give us game-changing ideas. God begins to give us solutions. God begins to give us ways of escape. We are too used to activity. We are too used to listening to what other people say. We are too used to getting into a presence of God. And the first thing you do is you two hours and then you get back and you, you've done your stuff. We need to begin to learn to quieten our souls and still our souls. And that way we begin to develop our capacity to hear his voice. I also like the fact that he, when he started off, he said, talked about it's not just the mandate or responsibility of the prophets to wait. It's the every one of our responsibilities. One of the reasons why I feel a lot of prophets have led the church astray is because they're no longer waiting. We are so hungry. You know, the church is so hungry for a prophetic word that we don't even give the prophet enough time to wait. So he goes in and he just hears co and he comes out and says, God has said there's going to be corona, you know, and he forgets that, that God was not talking about corona, God was talking about commissioning. We didn't wait, spend enough time to hear the full sentence and the full heart and the mind of God. So I just want to challenge us, you know, through this week as we listen, it is so important for us to hear the word and to go back over this word and meditate on it and anchor it in ourselves so that by the time this week ends, our capacity to wait on God will have lifted to a whole new level. This is 801. We want to wind up our service. I just want to ask Grace to put our pay bill number on the screen. Uh, for those who are joining us, thank you very much. We continue to appreciate you and to honor you for your support and uh, to bless the Lord for that. Hallelujah. We would not be able to have come this far without uh, just the faithful giving of the people of God. And we want to say that we are grateful. The Bible says, give and it shall be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So as we give, uh, God will give back to us. We don't give necessarily because it's convenient. We give because uh, that is commanded. That's what God expects, a culture, a lifestyle of giving. And when that begins to happen, then we open the door for God to give back to us. Otherwise, there endeth our service. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, hallelujah. I just want to read some of the comments on the chat section. Um, I really love that statement that Pastor Francis made earlier. Wait with him wait for him, wait on him. You know, just the different stages of, of waiting. Wait with him, wait for him, and wait on him. You know, sometimes we have a concept that waiting means, and for a long time it was waiting means you're like a servant, you're waiting for instruction. But there's times when it's not a servant waiting to, for instruction or waiting to be told what to do. It's just you're waiting with him. He's told you to wait. He's there silently with you. You're there silently with him and just enjoying his presence. Um, Jar said, wait upon the Lord to enjoy his presence. Just enjoy the presence of God. Don't, don't do it as a religion. Don't do it under compulsion. Enjoy his presence. Enjoy being with him. Enjoy fellowship with him. And there uh, Mama Anna Wari says, great message Pastor Bukachi. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Pastor Bukachi. We are back again here tomorrow at uh, at, at 6, at 7 p.m. in the evening. If you're joining us via Facebook uh, you'll find us here at 7 p.m. in the evening. Those who are joining us on the Zoom call will be here tomorrow from 7 p.m. and Pastor Bukachi is just taking us through this week. And I love again the connection that he made that before we talk about uh, the courts of heaven, we need to talk about waiting because many people again uh, talk about the courts of heaven without talking about the capacity, the ability to just see what is happening in the spiritual realm. And waiting will enable you to see what is happening in the spiritual realm so that when you get into the courts of heaven, you can begin to see not just with your physical eyes but with your spiritual eyes what is happening at that level. So let's just end with the words of the grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. The Lord bless you and keep you.